everyone, just a short intro before we get started. So this see, this is going to be a little series of videos just because there's too much content to cover in all of them. I would put them all together, but end up being quite a few hours long. So what I've done is I've broken it up into reasonable parts. So everything finishes at a like an ideal place. And what the series is going to actually look at is using our VR controllers to have some hats so we can actually interact with objects, play animations, change our grip states, that kind of thing. So the overall of the process is going to be we'll have the ability to control our grips, our triggers, and detect when our fingers touch our face buttons. We're going to use all of those to drive some animations using anim blueprints and a couple of components and a whole bunch of blueprints. And then we're going to jump right in. So you can actually see what this looks like, like if I press play. We actually have the ability to have our hands and it's all non-destructive. So I've got a little menu set up in mine. We won't be doing that in this one. So I can go to hand type, switch to our hands in real time. And you can see if I close my grips or press the grips, the hands close really slow. And then if I touch the face buttons at the same time, we can actually move our thumbs. And then if we touch the trigger, we can actually point. So we're gonna cover all of this pick them up and then play the animations when we press our trigger fingers and then release and how we can use this and set it up. So our hands on the right with some sockets, sockets on the left. So it kind of detects all that stuff. So there is a lot to do and not much time to get it all sorted. I want to tell you about our first sponsor. So it is actually Kiwi Design and they make these awesome grips for Oculus Quest controllers. So I got the red. And what they actually do is they actually have protective covers all the way around. So let's say you're playing something like Gorilla Tag. You're probably going to put a hole in the wall before you damage your controllers, which is exactly what you want. I've been using them for around a month now, and I've got to say I absolutely love them. So they're based on the Valve Index controllers. So you've got the wrist strap, which allows you to stick it on and then tighten it up. And the whole reason for them is they're designed to for people who have bigger hands. So if you've got bigger hands, the original controllers can feel a little bit small and these actually make it easier to fit into the palm of your hand. They also have quick access to the batteries. So you can actually open it up and then you can pull on the little tab and get your batteries out pretty easily. They're designed to be more ergonomic when you're, you're using them, especially if you're using them all day. And as a developer, I actually find these much nicer than the default controllers, to be honest because I can actually just put my hand in there and I can still use the keyboard a little bit. Also been doing a lot of events lately where we go out and then we have people use them. And I've been using alcohol wipes on them as well. So I've been able to wash them down, make it a little bit easier, a bit nicer for everybody to use. They also come in a mixture of colors from blue, purple, pink, white, red, and I believe you can get red and blue. So if you want different controllers and then black as well. So you've got a big option. I highly recommend them. I've been using them for about a month now. And honestly, I think it's one of the best accessories that I've used on the Quest 2. So yeah, so if you are interested in it, there's going to be a link in the description, an affiliate link, and then you build the head on over to Amazon and get yourself a pair to try out. Highly recommend it if you've got big hands. So let's jump right into the video and let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new template for our project. So I've got a new folder on my desktop called VR Hands, uh, VR Hands Tutorial, and then the project name is just GDXR VR Hands. We're going to load this up and we're going to work from the default template. But while that is setting up, we're going to open up our Chrome or internet browser. And I want you to head over to jonathanbardwell.gumroad.com slash i slash VR hands for Unreal Engine. This will be linked in the Discord. Uh, this will be linked in the description below. And what this does is it actually has two two projects that I've already set up for you. So it's based on the templates for 4.27 and for UE5. And what we've got is the hands already set up. What I've done is I've took the old 4.26 hands, put them into Blender, duplicated them so we got a right hand. So we got two individual skeletal meshes. And then what we're going to do is we're going to download this file and we're going to migrate the content over to our project or your game if you've already got one started. And because we're going to focus on Unreal Engine 5, it's the same setup for either engine. So don't worry about which one you pick. You should still be able to follow along. The only difference is the UI and these are free. So we're going to select GDXR VR hands for Unreal Engine 5 and a zero. 
unless you want to put a pound or two in there for the time it took to sort out, I'd appreciate it. And then we just do, I want this. In this case, we're going to enter our email address. This is just so I can email you a receipt basically. And then we're going to do get. And you can now do view content. And this will show you both of the folders anyway. It just selects which one. Um, we're going to download the UE5. So download, we're going to choose a place to put it. So I'll just put it in the downloads folder. I'll call this drum road hands, if I can spell it properly. And then we're going to show in folder. And we want to unzip it. So extract all. And the reason we're doing this is because if I migrate the folders and I put them in there, so you could drag and drop them in, it breaks the skeletal mesh for some reason in U5. So this just seems like an easier way to do it. So if you want, you can actually start with just this template project. It is literally just the VR template with the skeletal meshes included in a folder. So what we do is we're going to open this up and we'll then migrate from this version to our own version. So as you can see, we've got the default template and this is the GDXR VR hands. So the one we just downloaded from Gumroad. If we go to the VR template folder, you can see here, I've got a file for VR hands. And what it includes is a left and right hand. So if we open it up, we have our skeleton mesh. And then, well, we've got skeleton mesh, physics mesh and skeleton. And in our left hand, we've got three different animations already set up. We'll do a part two on setting up more animations and how you can add them to your project. But for now, we'll stick with the three and we'll get that up and running. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to VR Hands or VR Template. And we're going to right click and we're going to use Migrate. And that will select all the folders related to these hands. And we're going to hit OK. And we want to search for our project or folder. So in this case, it'll be on my desktop. And we've got VR Hands Tutorial, VR Hands. And then we just want to select our Contents folder and hit Select. That'll migrate over. So it says Content, content Migration Completed Successfully just behind the camera so you can't see it. <laughs> Bad place to put it. So now we can minimize both these and we can open up our actual tutorial template. So now if we open up our VR template, we've got our VR hands and we can close our old one. So close that one. And now we actually have our hands set up in our project. So if I open the right hand, you can see that the textures are a little bit messed up in here, but we can open this up and it'll fix it. And then just hit save and it'll update all of them. And then we want to do the same thing for the left hand. So let's just open the skeleton mesh and hit save. So now we're actually ready to start setting this up. Um, as I mentioned, it's going to be quite a long process. There's a lot to do in a lot of different places to do things. So we just need to figure out the best place to start. And I think the best place to start is going to be setting up some enumerations. So this is what's going to drive our animations, basically like a little bit of a switch situation. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click and we're going to go to blueprints, enumeration. We're going to call this one E underscore grip state. And we want another one. So blueprints, enumeration, E underscore hand to use. So in this setup, we actually change our hand based on left and right. So we're going to need both of these. So if we open up grip state, we can set this up first. And we're going to need four different enumerators. So we're going to hit four times. So we've got zero to zero to three, which is an array because it starts at zero. So the first one display name is going to be open. Second one will be can grab. Third one will be grab. And the fourth one will be fire. So fire is going to act as our trigger press. So if we want to play an animation when we pull the trigger, if we're holding something, we want, might want to play an animation on top of that, then this is going to be the one that fires that. So you can name it whatever you want, but just keep that in mind. So it could be trigger or something. So we're going to hit save for grip state. And for hand to use, we're going to have two. First one is going to be left hand and the second will be right hand. Unfortunately, I can't zoom in, so it might be a little bit difficult to see for some people, but it's just left hand and right hand. And that's it for our enumerations. We're now going to set up a blueprint interface. So we're going to go to blueprints, blueprint interface, BPI underscore and anim. And we're going to open this one up and we're just going to create one function. And this is going to be called grip state. 
This is essentially going to drive everything we do. Close. So when I originally set this up, I try to remove the ability to, to have to cast to our animation stuff and to also only have to do it once. We don't want to do our code multiple times. We kind of just want to do it once and then have it work with everything else. So what I figured out is we could actually create a skeletal mesh component. So we've got a blueprint class and we go all classes. We search for skeletal mesh. We have something called a skeletal mesh component. What that allows us to do is put loads of code, or not loads, our code, inside of this, and then we can have one component work for our left and right hands. This will get a little bit confusing because it appears as though there's nothing in it, when in fact there is. And I'll show you how you can add a little bit more control over that as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a skeletal mesh component, and we're going to select this, and we're going to call this component, so C underscore skeletal hand. And this is going to act as our basically hand. So we're going to hit enter and we're going to start by opening this up. The first thing we're going to do is actually remove the begin play and event tick because we don't need those. And we're going to start by creating two custom events. So we're going to right click custom event and CV doesn't work in UE5 for some reason. So control C, control V, and then we're going to rename these, which I could have done originally. And the first one is going to be called set hand. So when our game plays, we're going to fire this line of code and it's going to set the information for our hands, such as position and rotation, as well as the skeleton mesh. And the second one, once we rename it, is going to be set grip state. So this is going to act as essentially a middleman between our VR pawn and our animation blueprint to control what plays and when it does it. But we've only got to do this once and it'll work for each one. And uh, what we need to do is for our set hand, we want to add an input. This input is going to be our motion controller. So we're going to say if left motion controller is detected, we want to set our skeletal mesh and animation to our left hand. If the right motion controller is detected, we're going to use the right hand and right animation. So we're going to call this parameter motion controller. And then for our Boolean, we're going to change that to motion controller. And we do motion controller and we want object types motion controller component object reference so we hit compile and save and now we want to promote our motion controller to a variable so we'll keep it as it is from our motion controller we're going to do get motion source and we're going to check to see if this is equal to our left hand so search left and do a branch and from our true. So if our motion source is equal to our left hand, it'll be true. So we'll set our information for that. So our skeletal mesh and our animation, we're going to have these as kind of a fallback. So when you set yours up, once you finish this, you'll actually be able to input your own animations and scale meshes into the whole system. And it should run pretty fine actually. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click and search for skeletal mesh. So, yep, skeletal mesh, and we scroll right down. So we get skeletal mesh. And you might be wondering where this comes from. So because we're a skeletal mesh component, this component actually contains the ability to have a skeletal mesh already. So we're just getting that. So if it's invalid, which means we haven't set one, we're just gonna fall back to these default hands. So is valid, we want the question mark one. And we'll plug that into true. And we're actually going to copy and paste this into our false. Let's say skeletal mesh. So if our skeletal mesh hands don't exist, this will make more sense afterwards. Just bear with me. Then we're going to say, no, we want to use our fallback hands, which is going to be these default ones that we have access to. So is not valid is going to set skeletal mesh. And then we're going to set animation so and then set animation instance class yes yeah, so set anim, anim instance class like so and for our set skeletal mesh because this is our left hand we're going to search for skeletal mesh VR hand left and we'll create a new class in a minute so we can actually get our animation we don't have that yet 
And then we're just going to copy both of these down and plug it into our is not valid for our bottom. And we just need to change our hand to the right. So what happens here is from our VR pawn, we will set our hand and it'll get our motion controller. It's going to check to see if our motion controller is equal to our left. If it is, we're going to set our skeletal mesh to our VR hand left and the animation as well. If a skeletal mesh already exists, so if you've got your own custom one and you're not using the template ones, you can actually drag and drop this in and then set it up as you wish or just have it go as the default really. You won't need to worry about it. So from here, from here we can go to our VR pawn and we can start setting up our code there. So we're gonna hit compile. We dock our C skeletal hand and then we're gonna open up our blueprints folder and search for our VR pawn. So it's important to note that this is gonna be non-destructive. So we're not gonna remove anything in here, including the OpenXR controls. We're gonna actually set it up so we can toggle between our VR hands and the OpenXR controllers. So if you wanna switch between controllers and give people the option, you'll be able to do that now. So what we're about to do is gonna go from our begin play and we're gonna to check to see if we wanna use our OpenXR controllers or our custom hands. So what we need to do is create a branch and plug it into our execute console command. And we're gonna promote this to a variable. And we're gonna call this use controllers. So if it's true, we'll use the OpenXR controllers. And if it's false, we'll use our skeletal mesh hands. And we're gonna do that by getting references to our motion controller right and motion controller left. And I'm gonna put these the other way around because we're working from left to right. And what we want to do is we want to set the visibility. So from our true, we're going to set our visibility to true. And we're going to have both of these plugged in there. And from our false, we're going to have it plugged in and set our visibility to hidden. So what happens is if we use our controllers, our motion controllers, so OpenXR input, so our Oculus Quest models, that kind of thing, will be set to true. And then from false, we will make sure a new visibility is set to false and they'll be hidden. We now need to do the same thing for our left and right hands. However, we don't actually have those added in. So we're gonna select our motion controller right. And from the components, we're gonna search for hand. And you can see we've got C skeletal hand. So that's the blueprint or the, the skeletal mesh component that we created. We're gonna select this and I'm gonna call this, which would be right hand. And then I'm going to do the same thing for our left. So search hand, C skeletal hand, and we're going to have this as our left. So left hand. And I'll make sure I put a capital on there so they're all named the same thing. And now we actually have both of these set up so we can see them. So if we drag, so there we go. So we've got our left hand and our right hand. We're going to select both of them. We're going to drag them in. And if we have a look actually, so left hand component, you'll see that we have a load of information related to our animations. So skeletal mesh is empty and so is our animation mode. We wanna keep these empty unless you're using your own on top of this. So think of this as a base template that you can use for everything. And then if you wanted to add your own stuff, you can drag and drop it in here. But by default, when it's empty, we default back to the template hands as it is. This will make more sense. So from here, we've got our right hand and left hand. We want to copy our set visibility nodes and we're going to control C, control V. And then we want to plug them in to our other ones like so and move these down. So what happens is if our motion controllers are visible, we're going to make our hands invisible. So we connect those both up and make that one hidden. And we do the same thing and we set this one to visible. And now we can start to set our hands. But first, let's actually comment our code. So we're going to do everything over this, and we'll set controller visibility. And then we have this next section set hand visibility. And it's important to note that these are the opposite. So the motion controller is true at the top, and then the hand is false. And then the bottom one is false and then true. Otherwise it'll kind of mix up. So now that we have the ability to hide and show our hands, 
we're going to do that set. So if we go back to the C skeletal mesh HUD, or the, the hand, we've got our set hand, we're going to set this up now. So it gets our motion controller and our skeletal mesh. So in our VR pawn, what we want to do is we want to drag in our left hand component. And we're going to drag off and search set hand. So this will fire our custom event. And you can see here it's asking for our motion controller. So our left hand has our motion controller left. We plug that in like so. And we're going to do the exact same thing for our right hand. Set hand. And then we're going to have our motion controller right. Plug them in like so. Connect them up. And our set visibility is going to plug into our first one. So it kind of splits it and fires both of them. So now we have one section of code, our component, which fires both of these. And we're going to comment this and we're going to call it set hand or set hands. And I think before we go ahead, I need to remember to rotate our hand components. So our left hand is going to be minus 90 on the X. Otherwise it'll be rotated around. And our right hand will be 90. So what this will do is it will take our hands and it will rotate them around so it will be a bit easier to understand. Otherwise, when you start it, they'll be face down or palm down. Now what we can do is hit compile. So what we can do now is actually test this out. So if we press play and preview, when we start, we should actually just see our default open XR controllers because our branch is set to true for that show controller boolean. So if we press escape and we've crashed for some reason, we hit okay. And we go back into our VR pawn. What we can do is we can set use controllers to false. So if we jump in now, we can actually see our hands. They are rotated the wrong way. They're pointing straight up, but we're on the right track. We've got our hands in there and none of the inputs work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate our hands again. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our left hand and our right hand and we're going to set both of their Y values for the rotation to 90. So doing that and then we play and test. We should be able to jump in and have both of our hands going the wrong direction. <laughs> so it's minus 90. I was close. So minus 90. And then we hit compile. Again, we jump in. We got both our hands going roughly the right direction. We might need to work on this rotation a little bit, but you kind of get the idea. We just got to change the rotation and then we're good to go. So I had a little play around and I found minus 40 was good, but the scale is a bit too big for both of them. So I'm going to set this to 0 0.8, 0 0.8, and then point. Hey, so we compile and save. Now this time it should feel a little bit nicer. I got smaller hands, but they are working pretty well. And if you wanted to, you could actually move them back a little bit. So we're just gonna do some fine tuning and then I'll let you know the values that I go with. So after having to play around with the hands, I found that setting the location to minus 10 for X on the left hand, and then the rotation to minus 90 on the X and minus 40 on the pitch, works quite nice and it feels quite nice as well as setting the scale to 0 0.9 so hopefully you guys can see this so it's minus 10 on the x for location rotation is minus 90 minus 40 and then scale is 0 0.9 and for the right hand the location is minus 10 as well the rotation this time x is 90 and then y is minus 40 with the scale is also 0 0.9 so that just feels a lot nicer and now we actually have our hands in there. So now we can start setting up our animations because we want to be able to interact with things and press our buttons to control our hands. And before we start setting up our animation grip state or in our C skeleton hand set grip state, we need our animation. So we need animation blueprints. So we're going to go to our VR template and in our left hand, we're going to create an animation blueprint based off this skeleton mesh. And it's super easy to do that. We just want to select our hand left skeleton and we're going to go right click, create animation blueprint. And we see we've got VR hand left skeleton animation blueprint. We can leave it as it is, or we could just rename it to animation blueprint left hand. So 
animation blueprint AB left hand and then we're going to do the exact same thing for our right hand so select our skeleton right click create animation blueprint animation blueprint underscore right hand and then hit enter unfortunately there's no easy way to do this like duplicate it so do it once and then it works throughout however we're gonna to have to do everything twice at this point so it's a little bit of a pain but it's so worth it and now that we actually have these that exist what we can do is we can go to our VR hand and we want to open up our skeletal hand component and this is where we've got our set grip state we're going to start by adding in our grip state enum so we're going to hit the plus our boolean is going to be search grip state you see we've got e grip state and we'll just name this literally grip state we're now going to promote this to a variable so we have a reference to it and we want to do a branch now so we're going to do a branch from our grip state and for our condition we're actually going to use the animation blueprint in here so we've got set anim instance class from our set hand if you remember we didn't set it because we didn't have one created so for our vr hand left so our set anim instance class we're going to search or right at the top here we see we've got animation blueprint left hand we we'll do the same thing for our right and we're going to plug it into the bottom like so so what this does is in our skeletal mesh component it sets our animations so we don't need to set the variables we can literally just call get animation and then if we scroll all the way to the bottom we get anim class so we can get animation class and we're going to use this so if we drag off and we do equal to we can actually search for the class if you remember we're doing left hand up here so we're going to do the same thing so left and you'll see we've got animation blueprint left hand and we're going to plug that into our condition so because we're spawning two of these components, skeletal mesh components for each hand, they're going to act individually. So if our animation class is our left hand, it's going to fire true and it will only fire the input for that left hand and then false will be the right hand. If you're not used to coding, it's going to kind of boggle your mind a little bit, but it should work. Key term being should. And what we want to do, and what we want to do here is now get our animation instance. So get animation or get anim instance yep get anim instance and we're going to set grip state so we search grip state and that's not going to work because we need to drag off grip state so we're going to drag off our grip state and search grip state so you see here we've got call function set grip state and that is c skeletal hand and before we set the rest of this up, what we need to do is go to our animation blueprints. So if we go to VR template, VR hands, and we open up our left hand and inside of our animation blueprint, what we're going to do is we're going to go to class settings and we're going to add the blueprint interface that we created at the very beginning. So it's got currently got no interface in class settings. We're going to add and we'll search at the bottom. It says BPI hand anim. We're going to hit compile, close the left one. And then we're going to do the exact same thing for our right hand, animation blueprint right hand, class settings, and we're going to add the blueprint interface, BPI anim, hit save, and close both of those. And now if we go back to our skeletal hands, we can actually call it from get anim instance. So if we hit compile, and now we drag off, we can do grip state, and you see we now have grip state message for blueprint interface hand anim. We're going to create one of those and then we're going to create a, another one and we'll plug that into the false and the true and now we can actually connect in the bottom one as well so what we don't have is a way to send our grip state through our interface to our animation blueprint so what we're going to do is we're going to double click on our grip state message that'll open up our information and then in our grip state we want to go to inputs and we'll search for our grip state and we'll call that value or variable grip state hit compile and save now we can minimize that one and if we hit compile nothing happens apparently so we're gonna have to redo that bit I'm sorry grip state message yep and plug that into there 
Control C V. Make that back up like so. And then we hook the grip state to our grip state like that. And then make sure those are connected. So now when we press our button, we can tell it to set our grip state in our animation and we don't need to cast to it. So it's super useful. And for now, that's it for our actual skeletal mesh hand. We're gonna come back to it later to add some more stuff. But for now, what we can actually do is start setting up our information to send it through. So we're gonna do that in our animation blueprints because we want some animations to play. So in our VR hands, we want to go to our animation blueprint right hand and we'll start with this one specifically. And in our event graph, what we want to do is because we've already got our class settings with our BPI hand anim, we're going to right click. Then we'll search event grip state. That'll get that function for us. So we can do event grip state. And you can see here we've got from BPI hand anim, grip state. And what we're going to do is we're going to promote this to a variable. So right click, promote to a variable. We'll call this grip state. Or we'll actually rename it. We'll name that grip state used so with our grip state set up here we can actually go to our animation graph and we're going to create a state machine so we're going to right click state machine so add new state machine and we're going to call this grip state so we double click name this grip states and then we can plug that into our results we will be coming back into this later and we added a whole lot more but we're going to open this up and now in here we're going to set our default animations so by default our hand is going to be set to open so in our assets browser on the right here we can drag in our open animation if you don't see the asset browser go to windows and then you should be able to find it in here so asset browser and we want to drag in our open animation that will be our default and then from there we're going to have it set grab so we're going to drag in our grab and we're going to connect this up both ways. And inside of our actual transition rules, we're going to use our grip state to determine what we've got. So we're going to open that up and we can drag in our variable grip state used. So get grip state. We're going to drag it off and we're going to do equal. Oh, we're going to drag it off and we're going to do equal and we want equal enum and this says if our grip state is equal to grab then we're going to make our animation play the grab so we're going to go back to grip states we're going to do for the transition rule going backwards we're going to get our grip state used get grip state and if this one is equal to open we're going to have it set it back to the open animation so we'll hit compile and save. And if we were to test this out, so we jumped into the editor, nothing would actually happen because we don't have these set up. So we're gonna do the same thing for our left hand. So I'll dock this window, VR template. We're gonna open up our left hand and we're gonna run through the same thing. So animation blueprint, left hand, event graph. We wanna search for event grip state. Promote that to a variable. And then have this named grip state used. It's essentially mirroring everything that we've done. So in our animation graph now, we're going to right click. Uh, we want state machine. We're going to call this grip state. Plug that into our results. And now if we open up our grip state. We want to have our open like so. And then from our open, we're going to have our grab plug it in the exact same way so our transition to our grab is going to be our grip state variable equal grab and then from our grip state so our transition rule going back I have the exact same thing is that this time it will be open and plugged in like so so we hit compile to save we now actually have our animation set up so we can press our inputs and we can trigger it. So what we need to do now is actually go to our VR pawn and start setting it up. So we actually have some information in here. So we've got our input action grab left. 
an input action grab right inside of our VR pawn. And this is where we're going to set up a whole bunch of stuff and a lot more complicated things. And we want to set grip state. So set grip state. And we're going to plug that into our is not valid. And we're going to have that as grab. So if we're not holding anything, it's going to grab. And then copy our right hand component and set grip state below. And we're going to have that set to is not valid. And we'll have that as open. So when we release our grips, it should open up our hands. So if we jump in, pop the headset on. We should have our hands. And now if we press our grip button, our hands open and close. So that's exactly what we want. So we can open and close our hands as we would like to. So what we're going to do is we're going to pause this one here because we're going to do a lot more stuff and I kind of want to make it a bit more manageable, manageable for people. So we're going to have a part two. So if you want to see that one, make sure to hit the, the linked video. And I'll link it in the description as well. But big thanks to Patreon and a shout out to them for making this possible. So we'll leave this here for now and then we'll come right back to it in part two and we'll set it up with our grab component and our gun. So we've got our animations in there as well, as well as a whole bunch of other stuff. So make sure to head over to there and I'll see you then. Bye.